Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Today, my guest is back. We will be talking about improving libido and sexual health. And part of the solution is to improve your physical health. And I know that you really need that strong physical foundation in to work on your relationships, your mental health, and your spiritual growth, whether it's overcoming anxiety, depression, losing weight, or detoxing the body in the proper way, and even increasing that level of frequency in life, you need a strong physical foundation of health in order to gain the willpower to make the bigger changes in your life. If you're new to following me, I specialize in helping you get there. You can find my health articles, my cutting edge natural supplements, devices, and protocols at sarabantahealth.com. My website is the sponsor of the show. So as you support my website, I'm able to bring you more cutting edge content and guests to the show. Today, we are going to be diving into sexual health. And part of that is the aging process. As we age, our hormones decline. So my goal is to help you reverse your age. First, I want to talk about some tools that you can use to actually improve that mitochondrial health and increase your energy inside and outside the bedroom. So first, let's talk about Accelerated Silver. This is the supplement that started Accelerated Health products. My son was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of nine, and since then, no one in our family of five has been sick, missed a day of school, or been on antibiotics in the last 11 years. And he, of course, does not have leukemia anymore. Accelerated Silver is enhancing your immune system's ability to devitalize foreign pathogens, including viruses viruses, bacteria, fungus, and even parasites. If your immune system is bombarded with fighting foreign pathogens, it can't simultaneously engage in those anti-aging or reverse aging mechanisms or even the autoimmune issues. So by keeping your immune system strong, the body engages in those anti-inflammatory processes leading to optimal health. And it's enhanced with scalar frequencies to increase its efficacy. No other silver solution has this. With that, you, you include the accelerated keto, and this flip, flips you into fat burning mode within 30 minutes, and your body taps into its own fat stores for energy right away. What does this do? You get physical and mental energy right away and feel like, okay, now I can do this. When the body's running on ketones produced by the accelerated keto, combine it with intermittent fasting and a low carb diet, that ATP, ATP production increases significantly in the mitochondria and energy increases. And there are other ingredients in the supplement that actually help defat the liver. The liver is really important for hormonal uh, processes, thyroid health, energy, physically and mentally. The more a person's liver is defatted and unclogged, the easier it is for it to function in all areas, including breaking down those fat molecules. And our guest will talk about that visceral fat, that tummy fat that can actually be a, a huge detriment to a man's hormones, right? So our goal is to increase the hormonal balance in the body so that you are able to perform in the bedroom as well. The liver is also where the thyroid hormone converts T4 to T3 as the liver functions better, thyroid works better, mitochondrial works better, and energy increases. Next is the Acceleridine. The Acceleridine iodine is needed for all 100 trillion cells in the body. It increases ATP production by 18 times, which is true cellular energy. Helps with brain function, depression, mood. Um, it helps with fat burning, healthy apoptosis, which is the destruction of disease cells, and more. 
and you need it for the thyroid. If your thyroid is down and you don't have the energy and you're suffering from Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism, how do you think you're going to do with your partner in the bedroom and with your energy at work and, and life in general? The accelerating is needed for every human being on earth. We are not getting it from our diet like we used to. And you can couple that with the accelerated ancient salt, which helps with digesting fats, it helps it's scalar charged to further enhance its frequency. It pulls out the positively charged toxins, parasites, and those undigested fats. A lot of people right now are having a hard time digest and break down the fats and proteins. The salt really helps. And coming soon is the accelerated thyroid. This combines ancient herbal wisdom from Ayurvedic and advanced glandular therapy formulated to support the whole endocrine system, not just the thyroid. It is the amazing. It is replacing two very very um, effective thyroid supplements all in one so that you can take just one, save some money, but we are taking the very best of the best ingredients sourced out, very specific. I am so passionate about, about thyroid health, and that is why we came out with Accelerated Thyroid. I give more tips and tools through my free group coaching. You can join with the link below on Telegram or email me through the website, sarabantahealth.com. The difference between me and any other group coaching is I provide the most cutting edge frequency enhanced supplements that work synergistically with each other and your body does not experience those flu-like symptoms. You do feel great day one. Leave a comment below if you're interested or check it out on the website, sarabantahealth.com. Now to the good stuff, John Gray. Dr. John Gray is back. He is the author of the most well-known and trusted relationship book of all times. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. His most recent book is Beyond Mars and Venus. I recommend both of them. You will continue to learn and you will need to read them over and over again because there are so many aha moments and that doesn't make sense, but now I know. So I definitely recommend investing in them. His many books, blogs, and free online workshops at marsvenus.com provide practical insights to improve relationships at all stages of life and love. His approach to overall health is completely in line with what we do here at sarabantahealth.com to increase your frequency. I love John because we are aligned on diet and intermittent fasting and how to increase your frequency in life. So welcome, John. How are you? Oh, Sarah, nice to be with you again. Happy to be here. I love having you on because when we talk about overall health, it's not just the physical health, it's mental, spiritual, and of course, relationships are a huge part of that. And one thing that I really want to dive in today is sexual health and libido. And I know you've talked about how testosterone levels have decreased significantly over the last 20 years. And even, you know, women, um, that the, the crossing of the lines of the men and the women on the women's side and the, the male side, and we're getting all of these cross currents of gender fluidity and, and it's all confusing. Well, as a result, things are going downhill in the bedroom. So can you help us understand how women and men can increase their libido and increase their success in the bedroom? Yeah, it's a great, great, great topic. And, uh, you know, since you're listing out all those wonderful products and all those benefits, I, I made a few notes of some of the benefits of fasting for your libido. Uh, when, when you fast, if you're uh, particularly for men, it's a huge testosterone booster because it produces growth hormone. And this is measurable. Uh, literally various things can pump up your testosterone. You also talked about uh, belly fat, which is another reason for particularly for men to fast because belly fat produces estrogen and estrogen lowers testosterone. This is, you just see, you can almost see a man's testosterone levels go down as his belly fat increases. And as his testosterone levels go down, his uh, libido decreases. Uh, since we're on the internet, I'd be a little graphic, but basically when men, when you have your erection, you can do your testosterone test just then. If there's nothing, then you've got very low testosterone. You need to get it up and we'll talk about ways to do it. 
But if you, the, the Taoists, these are ancient studies of, of sexology and so forth from other cultures from thousands of years ago. They actually measure your biological age when a man has an erection. Uh, if it's straight up, he's got, you know, like a young 20 year old, at least the way a young 20 year old used to be, not today. But, and then you go down a little bit and now you're into 25, 30, go down a little bit. Now you're 30, 40, go down a little bit, <laughs> you're 50, 60. And, and even, 70 years old, 80 years old, <laughs> I'm just in the men's locker room, <laughs> I saw one man probably looked like I'm ready to die, but he had an erection and it went all the way down. <laughs> so this is, this is your life force. This is your vitality, particularly for men. Estrogen is primary, primary uh, life force. And of course, if you're sexually inactive for a man, you will also have low testosterone. Uh, unless unless you're really working hard and you're using up your testosterone and then taking time to relax. When you relax, uh, it doesn't build. See, you know, Minifer Mars is famous for the cave. You know, now every man's got a cave, you know, all that. I wrote about that back in the back in what was it? Uh, the 80s in a book before Minifer Mars even. But I've been teaching it most of my life, teaching men about when you go to work, you act, you take action. And that action kind of exhausts you. It uses up a lot of testosterone if you're facing any stress. So you're challenging yourself, you're overcoming challenges, you're setting goals, you're taking action, you're in service, you're in selflessness. Uh, you have discipline that you apply. You don't just complain or whine. All of those things are testosterone boosters for men. So you basically, you're using up your testosterone during the day. Then when you come home, you take cave time, which is to relax and do something that's challenging for you, but doesn't have outcome, any stressful consequences. For example, if, you know, if I'm in my work and I, my, my livelihood depends upon making money, then if it's not going so well, then my stress level would be much higher. If I'm playing a chess game with my friend, <laughs> if I lose, so what? So, this is challenge. Uh, so men typically have always had hobbies right? for the, th you know, with, back when I was growing up and you, in the fifties and sixties, if you had a job, you know, you wanted a job, you wrote out your resume, you'd always put your hobbies because successful men all have, all have hobbies. That's things you do that stimulate testosterone, but they don't produce any stress and that's downtime, that's hobby time. And it's also relaxation time. And I first learned about that with weightlifters is if you overtrain, your testosterone levels go down. Mm -hmm. If you, if you push yourself and then you have recovery time and most weightlifting people know, understand this, that if you want to build muscle and that takes testosterone, you've got to have recovery time. You can't just be pushing it all the time. So it's, so the idea here, the takeaway is for men, action and rest and during the rest relaxation or hobby time fun time you rebuild your testosterone but if you don't take action you rest it doesn't rebuild testosterone it just goes low so if you're just retired you're just sitting around you don't go out and use up your testosterone then it slowly declines and you know you see this happening for men when they retire they're no longer going out and challenging themselves, sometimes doing things that they'd rather not do, but they do it to support their families. That's called selflessness. When you're selfless and a man and you have discipline, you set goals and you follow through, all of those things are the behaviors that stimulate the production of testosterone. Now, at the same time, if you've got a big fat belly, uh, you don't produce as much testosterone. If you're not getting enough zinc, you're not going to produce mainly lots of zinc for testosterone production and pretty much besides the laziness in a lot of men today, uh, the lack of following through setting goals and following through with their actions. That's one aspect of it. And we see that happening more and more in the youth today. Yeah. But the, one of the reasons for that is to, to be motivated to set goals and achieve them and take action and so forth. You have to have a certain amount of testosterone. If you have estrogen, and, it, and there's a lot of things that produce excess estrogen in men. One of those things is talking a lot about your feelings. We've become this whole feeling thing because it all started because in colleges, they, they didn't discern the differences between men and women. As a matter of fact, they taught the faulty lie that we're all the same. Uh, but 
as a therapist, I know all the, I write books on therapy, right? I write all these psychological books and I know a lot of people who write these books and they get their information from their life experience. Okay. They're counseling people. They're counseling people. Well, 90% of the people in counseling are women. So naturally you, and you get great, dis, you get great results. If you have a woman in counseling and you get her to talk about her feelings and reflect on what she feels and what else, and what else did you feel? And what is it you wish? And what do you want? And uh, what's the belief you're forming there? And then, you know, there's a lot we do as therapists, but to a great extent, it's getting women to talk about their feelings and what's going on inside of them. Because when you do that, it produces estrogen. Now for women, for women, when estrogen goes up, their stress levels go down. For men, when testosterone goes up, their stress levels go down. So it, think about it, men, if you're, you know, anytime where you're feeling successful, you're feeling great, you're feeling alive. You know, what's happening is you're not making stress hormones in that moment. What you're doing is making lots of testosterone. Even if I look at some people who are, you know, doing dangerous things, you think about these rock climbers and people are flying off of mountains. I, not for me. Uh, I used to be a wild skier though, but then I think when I turned 40, I'm 70 now, but when I turned 40, uh, I fell down racing down a mountain. It took me about six months before I could do a, a lotus position. Okay. So I, I've been a yogi my whole life. I'm into yoga since I'm three years old. So meditation is a big part of my life. And meditation is the ultimate cave. See, that's how I came up with the idea of the cave. Mm -hmm. Yogi's from the cave. Uh, it's literally, literally for a man taking that time to forget his problems. You see, that's why it's a rebuilder of stress. Let's just see. And maybe I'd just mention here the basic biological difference between men and women that underlies a, a variety of differences for women. All women are different, but and all men are different in the category of men. Women are different in the category of women. But in that category of women, all women, when you have stress hormones being produced, you always have a deficiency of estrogen or you have a deficiency of progesterone, depending on what time of the month it is. So, uh, as a matter of fact, most women, when they're having um, suicidal feelings, it's, it's, it's uh, what's called estrogen dominance, which is, Estrogen is always good. It's just that estrogen dominance means you have more estrogen than, than progesterone. Whereas before your period, up toward from your from from your period to your ovulation is what I meant to say. Period to ovulation, what's going on there is your body's increasing its need for estrogen. So that's not a good time to pet fast for women. Estrogen is produced when you're depending on someone for something, and then uh, once you and that's where romance comes in. That's where intimacy comes in. If you have a romantic relationship, intimate relationship, your estrogen levels begin to double. Your sex drive tends to increase. A woman's sex drive is always associated with, I can't say always for anything because you always have, uh, you commonly have dysfunctional behavior. So dysfunction doesn't follow the rules I'm talking about. For example, uh, high dopamine is what happens when you have romance and a loving relationship, right? So man's treating you with respect, loving you, caring for you. Your estrogen levels go way high. And also for women, their first of all, their dopamine levels go high. This is exciting. And then they feel safe with this man. Then their estrogen goes very high. At the same time, you can take another one with low self-esteem and she's in the presence of a man who's dangerous, the opposite of someone who's courting you and her at her, Dopamine goes very high and her estrogen levels go high. This is why women fall in love with unavailable men, dangerous men. They intuitively go, this is not safe, which puts them into a reactive mode of being a super people pleaser, hmm. you know, extreme codependence. Codependence is where it's where it's where you make other people's needs more important than your own kind of a reaction It's in, in the context of where you are, you're a mother to a child. That's a very healthy reaction. But if you carry that into an adult relationship, it's very unhealthy and tends to be associated with all marriage problems. Uh, not all, but a lot of them is women making the man's needs more important. And then as a result, she ends up getting less and less and less and then blames him for not giving more. It's kind of like you can't blame someone for ignoring you unless you're attending to them a lot. But if you're ignoring them, <laughs> you can't say you're ignoring me. So it's like what women do to justify their negative feelings just kind of a tendency is to give more, give more. 
Now that's on the dark side. On the light side, giving more is wonderful, except give more to your children, not your husband. What you do when, when you, you make estrogen in a male female relationship, when you're depending on your partner for something to support you. So this is where as therapists, we, we've been taught to a certain extent, which is good that you get women to talk and miraculously they feel better. The problem for that, for women, it makes estrogen, estrogen lowers your stress, and then you feel better for a while. Well, think about how the brain operates. It, this is a playful metaphor and it's somewhat accurate actually, <laughs> and that there's this hippocampus in the brain and that has, that's where we store a lot of our emotional memories and think of it big, like a library and a woman biologically, and this is true on average, a woman's hippocampus is twice as big as a man's mm -hmm. twice as big. That's why women right away, just this talk, <laughs> you're going to change <laughs> your life. Women are always saying, what does he forget? Why does he forget? Well, he, when it comes to remembering things emotional, he's kind of in a wheelchair. <laughs> you can't expect somebody to walk if they're in a wheelchair. Uh, we would literally have half the potency for that. And we store much less women uh, under moderate stress. Women have eight times more blood flow to the mm -hmm. emotional memory, to the hippocampus. Whereas men under moderate stress, blood flow stops to the hippocampus. You see what we are designed to do to cope with stress is raise our testosterone because always when a man is stressed, his testosterone levels are lowering, lowering, lowering. And when his stress, when his stress goes away, he has high, high testosterone. <laughs> now you could, you know, just cause you're, you're, you're pumping out cortisol. doesn't mean you're necessarily going to feel that stress. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're just sitting on the couch watching, which generally happens after about maybe an hour and a half for me, if I'm passively watching TV, if you were to measure any man, if you were to measure his cortisol levels, they're going to start rising up. That's why we want to eat when we're sitting there passively watching TV an action movie or whatever. Yeah. One part of us thinks we're in action, but really our body is passive. So <laughs> maybe a few hours is okay sometimes, but too much of that will actually lower your testosterone, not the best cave time activity. A bit of that is see cave time activity is make, helps you to rebuild your testosterone, but it also feels good. And some men just then stay in the cave. <laughs> they don't come out in the relationship. So women have to know when your husband's in the cave, sometimes it's your job. If you want to have intimacy to stimulate him to come out of the cave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you do that? You give him a job to do. You basically say, honey, when you're out of your cave, when you're done watching that show, I know you've been really working hard. You just need some relaxation time. Well, when you're done, I need your help. Is what is it? Oh, no, no. When you're done, I'll tell you. And then what is the help women need today is they can do it all and they're overwhelmed. And sometimes if they ask, they don't know how to ask. That's courses I teach, but how to ask in a way that doesn't make a man want to do less for you. If you, if you complain, that's the way women ask. <laughs> they complain. Complaining just lowers testosterone. So you have to know the art of complaining. We have classes on at marsvenus.com for that. But right now I'm just focusing on when he's out of the cave, one request that every woman can learn today. That's the most important request, which is simply, well, okay. It'll only take about 10 minutes. He'll say, well, what is it? What is it? I say, okay, well, we're going to do a Venus talk. And if he doesn't read my books or you don't know this lingo, you can just say, I just want to talk about my day. And talking about my day, is like doing a mini 10 minute therapy session with your husband where you don't want him to talk. You don't want him to solve any problems. You just want to download your day. And when women hear this for, at first, they think, oh, well, I went back and forth. I went back and forth. Well, yeah, I went to $10 million to arrive in my bank account tomorrow. <laughs> Some things are just stupid. And yet you can understand the feeling of it because in the beginning of the relationship, there was a back and a back because he had something to say. Say. <laughs> And also was really interested to get to know you and impress you and everything. But once you're in a relationship, that's done. There's nothing to say. He has nothing to say because for <laughs> men in his cave, in order to cope with stress, we forget about our day. We want to forget about our day. We want to forget about all challenges and everything. Well, you know, there's more sophistication here. It's not like your husband's never going to talk but it's first not needing him to talk for you to feel better. 
Like I remember one time one of my buddies who divorced his wife, she just complained all the time, complained all the time. And one of the things she complained about is you never talk, you never talk. And he said, there's nothing to talk about. And then I said, well, that's interesting. You have nothing to talk about. But you know what? Every time we go to the movies every week, we sit in the car, we talk at least 15, 20 minutes. He goes, yeah, why is it that we talk? And I said, because I don't care if you talk. <laughs> like, whenever you're pushing somebody to change, whether it be man or woman, this is universal human being. If you push somebody to change, they push back. If you want this and you're pushing for it, you're going to get less. Simple as that. You push, you get resist, you resist, you'll always get more of it. So we have to learn what is non-resistance. That's called love. I love you just the way you are. If you want to talk to me, that's fine. I'm happy to listen. But if we want to help women, men to cope with their stress, what we can do if they don't know how to do this and they don't, they think they do, they don't. I've got 50 years of experience. If a woman is stressed, she didn't know how to get rid of her stress. The bottom line for women when they're stressed, almost always is either talk about your feelings, particularly as you're going towards ovulation. Then after ovulation, talking about your feelings can be helpful, but not the main thing. It's depending on someone for something, but at the same time, and that's called estrogen and progesterone. At the same time, you're depending on others for support. Do what you like. <laughs> that, that is progesterone, is, is acting according to what you want to do. Okay, do what you want. Do what's enjoyable for you. Be in charge of your life to find pleasure and happiness in your life. Now, that would be great if everyone's job was something she wanted to do. And usually in the beginning it is because she's hungry and it's going to make her money and she's single. And so she has a lot of stress because who's she depending upon? It's all depending on myself. Mm -hmm. So when you're depending on yourself, all you're making all the time is low estrogen. And at a certain point when you're depending on yourself, there's certain things in the day you want to do, you enjoy doing. And then when it's too much to do, particularly once you have children and you don't have a husband to help you, I just have such compassion for women and thank goodness this knowledge is there and there are coaches and there are therapists and you can do it yourself to a certain extent, but you have friends and what you can do is learn how to process your emotions, which is when you're stressed, talk about it. When women talk about what's, what's inside of them, what's building up inside of them, which is often very embarrassing to do unless you've got, unless you're, you know, like a, a victim, Oh, this terrible thing happened to me. This terrible thing happened to me. But the problem is when you're a victim, meaning you're complaining, brain scans are now showing that women who complain a lot actually under brain scan, uh, it's producing the kind of levels of dopamine that cocaine produces mm. pleasure. It's pure pleasure. And, and so it's, it's the back door to a healthy way to produce estrogen because complaining also produces high levels of estrogen. <laughs> so, but the problem is when you're done complaining, you have all this estrogen going up, you feel good. But then soon after that, you're complaining again, but there's nobody listening. It's going around in your mind. You know, I call that looping. You know, you're worrying about this. You're thinking about this. He didn't do that. I can't trust him. He wants to do this. He used to be like this comparing, you know, all these various things we do to sap out our happiness. Uh, it's, it's, it's addiction. Men have addictions to porn. That's one big, big one today. That's, you know, you mentioned that decreasing testosterone in males. Yeah. Uh, it's it, right now for a 20 year old, 20 years ago, his testosterone levels are 20% lower and not only are his, but they're lower in every male category on an average. Mm. A big part of that has nothing to do. A big part of that has nothing to do with anything I've just said. And it's literally eating toxic foods, which once again, Sarah is the expert on detoxification, uh, cleaning out the liver. And also when the liver is not cleaned out, you, you're not making good estrogen. If you're a woman and you've got all this liver fat that's inhibiting your, your uh, testosterone production as a man. So these are some really, really key things, but cleansing is everything. Uh, I cleanse every year. I do a week of fasting. I intermediate faster every day. Occasionally, I'm not like, Absolute, you know, if I'm at a, at a luncheon, I'll eat lunch, you know, it's just, you don't have to be so rigid with this stuff, but you do occasionally have to do something very disciplined, which is to cleanse your body and these supplements to help cleanse the silver is so great to do. So this is a good, good thing to know. All these things contribute to this 
enormous problem of infertility uh, besides low libido. For males, going on porn, when as their testosterone levels are going down, their aliveness goes, on, uh, goes up. I mean, goes down. Their aliveness goes down with low testosterone. And so all you have to do is turn on your computer and do porn. And because it, it's such a low level thing to do, your primitive brain is completely in control. There's mm -hmm. no love there. There's no love. See, love elevates you from the, the primitive part of you into the, we could say, human part of us. And then the divine part of us, it elevates us out of just our genitals. But the animals, they just, it feels good. You know, they do their sex thing. When, and well, we have that same part of us twice as big in men, whereas women are always wondering, worrying, why, why he forgot? How could he forget? He's late. He promised me he'd do this. Well, his brain's not the same. And, and women, men are always wondering, why doesn't she want sex right away? <laughs> why she so slow? Why do I have to convince her? You know, well, her uh, sex center is not as big as a man's and it's connected to her emotional center. So she has to feel emotionally safe, which then allow, which is oxytocin uh, when she feels safe then her estrogen can go up, then her arousal increases. And as estrogen gets to a peak healthy level, then her testosterone will take a little spike. And that's what happens, which makes her want to have sex. So many women say, I wasn't really in the mood, but we started kissing and touching and cuddling. And then I got in the mood. Well, what that's all about is she just doesn't have the testosterone to say, I want to have sex. So men never say to a woman, do you want to have sex? <laughs> just say, let's cuddle. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, I feel so connected to you. I love you. <laughs> Let's just cuddle. Because <laughs> she doesn't really, even though she could be put in the mood, it has literally testosterone levels have to go up along. I'm sorry. Testosterone has to go up because it's the response to her estrogen levels going so high. But at the same time, why do sexual, you know, why do women get all turned on to dangerous men, uh, un unmarried men, unavailable men? unattainable men. Uh, why? Why do they get all aroused? It's, it's the back door. It's the opposite. The opposite there. Same biological stuff's happening. In danger, you produce dopamine. Uh, mm -hmm. In getting what you want, you produce dopamine. So you can get there in different ways, like a soldier in war producing massive amounts of dopamine at, at the level of cocaine. And we usually when they come back, uh, they just feel horrible. And so they're jacked up on... Uh, Mountain Dew, and then then it turned, eventually in the last wars, it's cocaine. They're all out there in the cocaine countries. So they're just addicted to cocaine. And that's another thing is how do you overcome these addictions when you come back? It's a, a problem people can't do because they don't have the nutritional support and also the cleansing. You see, you have to put your body back into balance. Once it's so far out of balance, you have to have help for doing that, both physiologically and psychologically. So for women... In counseling, when they're unhappy, first thing I do, for example, and in all my classes, just when I teach, I validate, validate, validate. So they don't have to express what's inside because I'm saying this, 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 this. Naturally, their estrogen levels shoot up. Uh, they just line up to give me hugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, just, they feel so safe. They feel so safe. And so, they are safe. So, uh, John, real quick, when you're talking about women being attracted to this, these dangerous men, but then at the same time, us women are looking to feel safe and secure with our men. I'm trying to grasp. It seems paradoxical. Yes. But it's not. Once you understand the dynamics of this, everything I say, there's another side to it. Or people go, yes, but. And then I have to explain the yes, but. All right. So here, understand the biology. When women's do when dopamine goes high for a woman, this is one doorway to increase her estrogen. Dopamine goes high. Now, if a woman comes to me for counseling, she doesn't have high dopamine, but I can make her estrogen go higher by just asking questions and getting her to talk and to be a little bit of a mind reader, which makes me an excellent therapist is what she doesn't feel. I know what she's feeling. So I say, wow, you know, when that happens, you must feel so powerless and thinking about all those other situations where you couldn't get what you want. You must feel so disappointed and sad. It hurts, doesn't it? To be completely ignored. So I can talk them into any emotion <laughs> if, if it's close to what they're talking about. Women tend to talk about what happened and how they're victims. 
he didn't do this. I can't do that. Why is he doing this? I'm confused. I feel resentful. Well, that's just talk on the surface. That's the mind talking. That doesn't, but that will produce a little estrogen without a doubt. But what will release huge amounts of estrogen, produce help her go way up and her stress goes down, is talking about her feelings, bringing in emotions. So that's one way to raise a woman's estrogen. I can also help her in the house. I see you're carrying them. Oh, let me help, help you with that. And oh, I've got a great, just told my partner, uh, I've got, re I got reservations for actually right now in Marin County is playing at the big theater, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, the theatrical production. So I got tickets for that. I'm taking her to that. So it's planning a date, thinking something she'd like to do. That will raise your estrogen. That has nothing to do with danger, does it? No, it feels safe, safe, safe. But on the other side is what else produces dopamine? Danger. Okay. So if, if, if danger goes up, it really goes high. Then a woman goes into people pleasing and now she's sexually attracted to a man. And you know, other things produce, produce estrogen as well. If you see somebody who's really capable and competent, okay, that is also going to make you feel safe at just being around somebody who's capable and confident. Uh, in a positive way, not arrogance, but a conf confident, capable, disciplined. Um, then you feel in the presence, you feel a lot of amazing. How do they do that? That's see, that's feeling safe. If you were to be in their presence, you feel very, very safe. Then, then there's a whole other side of this. You know, it's like low self-esteem people. I've never said this before, I'm going to say it. <laughs> people go to horror shows, right? Did you ever go to horror shows, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> I said about, well, they're addicted to the dopamine that gets produced from horror shows. Huh? Okay. It's addictive. You know, it's, <laughs> we all do crazy things. Males do the craziest thing, which is the thing that lowers men's testosterone the most and to help raise testosterone, which we're talking about for men, restore uh, attraction for your partner. Uh, how do we lose it? And, you know, I mean, if you have arguments all the time, you don't feel safe with your partner, then you're not going to be turned on to your partner. And right. both men and women need to feel safe. It's just for women, safety is like 10 times more. Uh, a man actually testosterone builds up when he's in a slightly dangerous situation and that's healthy for him, slightly dangerous. If it's too dangerous, it's not health, unhealthy for his hormones. It just, you might die. <laughs> okay. So that make sure you're skilled. Uh, but any rock climber knows, water skier knows, extreme sports knows that you're in a state of flow. You just go in a meditative state. It's a, you, your survival is right there. Uh, and so there's a flow that you go into. If you learn meditation, and I highly recommend everybody to learn meditation, this amazing, amazing gift. You know, I'm 70 years old, have sex every day. Uh, testosterone levels 50% higher than when I was a young man. I'm happy almost all the time. Uh, all that stuff, the foundation of that for me, I clearly know is I meditate every day. Okay. I just recharge my spiritual being. And then I integrate it into my heart through being a loving person, integrate it into my mind by writing books or by teaching or, by, you know, hearing other people's problems and solving them. So integration of spirit is really what everybody's here for on a certain level. Uh, even if you're just on a level of survival, it's having belief in a God that's going to help protect you or heaven beyond, whatever it might be. I know that, you know, the, the lady that cleans my house, um, one day I was talking to her and she's talking about her kids and, and I just validated her a little bit and says, yeah, sometimes life is just suffering. And she went and she smiled and she says, yes, yes. But if we suffer, we, and do good, do our best, we will go to heaven. And it was so sweet <laughs> and a beautiful glow on her face. You know, I've suffered, but I will go to heaven. Well, that's that superstitious belief or someone's real belief, whatever it might be. I believe, I believe heaven is here and hell is here. Just to be clear on that. It's right here. And when I close my eyes and go out of my body, I'm in my same reality. I, it's just that I'm not in this physical reality, but that's my experience, but everybody can have their own. Uh, that's not my message to teach the world. I'm just sharing my context and what I'm about to say, which is her belief that she's going to go to heaven is a major stress reducer for her. Yes. Because the belief that my bless blessings are on their way, blessings are on their way. You feel 
that you're not alone in the world. When you feel you're not alone in the world, your stress level goes down. So, so one thing I want to touch on, cause we, I can't believe it. We're, we've got just 10 minutes. <laughs> we went so fast through this whole thing. And I, I didn't even talk too much about porn and I have to say one more thing. So, so important. And this is the, besides the toxicity in the environment, which is causing this unprecedented lowering of testosterone levels. And it's not just in the last 20 years, it's always started, you know, back 50 years ago, pretty much when they started having GMOs, that's when really it started to happen. And the pesticides they started using. Those are called hormone dis disruptors and plastics. The use of plastic bottle and water and plastics. What people now you can measure their bloodstream. They got plastic in their bloodstreams. Plastic is a hormone disruptor. Inhibits both men and women's hormones. Uh, so is GMOs. So that's again, once why cleansing is so, so important. But once you have low testosterone, you're a male, you're looking to bump it up. And some it's like taking a cocaine pill. And also we have a lot of <laughs> cocaine addiction and stimulant addiction. And even coffee is an addiction. Uh, I'm actually quite proud of myself. Uh, it took six months for me to fully go off coffee without having a lull. See, coffee keeps us from having the lull. And, and that, that, that maybe to understand the brain function of that, it's a little bit too complicated to explain. But the point of view here is all addictions lower your potency as a male or female, whatever they are. Uh, you're just avoiding, instead of generating the life force through your actions, through your feelings, through your meditation, to your belief in the universe, or helping other people, uh, eating good food, instead of doing it yourself, you're depending on something else to do it for you. And that's passivity. And that's that just brings your energy down. Now, a little, that's fine. Everybody in moderation. You know, I still eat ice cream. I love it. You know, I just have to, if, if I get a flat stomach, then it starts getting really flat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have ice cream and ruin it, <laughs> but I feel like I can keep it under control that way. But anyway, so because uh, again, fat belly is testosterone inhibitor and estrogen promoter. Uh, so back to what porn does, and this is just a little bit of research here. Low testosterone are feeling insecure, having a bad day, not having hobbies or meditation or something to bump you back up. Then what you do is you just go online and the cocaine of pornography takes over your brain and you ejaculate within, usually it's about within three minutes, it's done. Uh, porn sites say the average amount of time somebody spends on a porn site is eight minutes total. Mm. That means going, searching through, finding the right woman, doing your thing and you're done. And you never want to see that woman again. That's what women have to realize. If you have one night stand, you don't want to see you again in most cases. It's too much. You have to bond first. And that's a big subject, too big for now. But I want to just make this one point. When he does masturbate, his testosterone temporarily takes a surge. It feels alive. He feels great. But the flip side of that, just as if he took cocaine, he will now become depressed. The energy level will drop. And every man knows you feel awful afterwards. And, and now, unfortunately, I got to just get on my soapbox for a moment. They're teaching children to masturbate in schools mm -hmm. now under the guise of it feels good. This is loving yourself. No, it's not loving yourself. And every culture throughout history has always forbid it and shamed it. And it should be shamed, but in a loving way. Oh, we don't do that. It's as simple as that. You don't have to shame or get upset at your child or whatever it is. We just don't do that because it makes you sleepy. Your memory is not going to be as good. As long as you don't mess with that, you'll have fun later when you get up, grow up with a, and a partner, you can use it then. Whatever voices you want to do at different ages, you say something different to your kids. But that's not the point here. The point here is it's massively addictive, massively addictive. And suddenly every time your energy goes down, you have to have that to feel alive, then it will come back down. And that's the major reason the 20 year old years, the 20 year olds have taken such a dip right now is they're all doing porn. They're masturbating on average two to three times a day. Uh. That's the when I read about it, I have, I don't have any clients that that's the case. Uh, I, I had some people, uh, the guys who filmed my seminar. So <laughs> I'll get into their, their shoes on this one. And I told them you do this for a few years and now you're not going to be able to keep it up with a real girl because you're depending upon non-personal, uh, relationship in order to have your arousal. And that desensitizes your dopamine receptor sites in your brain. And you see what keeps, men's testosterone levels from going too high is estrogen. They balance each other. So if you're with a real woman, your estrogen levels are naturally going to go higher. If you look at a whole um, 
average testosterone levels for men at every age, they, they make a conclusion. If you're a single man, you'll have the highest testosterones for your age group. If you're a, in a committed relationship, it'll be the next highest. If you're married, it takes a big drop. Mm. And if you have children, it takes another big drop. So logically speaking, now you come back, I look at the research and I say, my experience and my logic is, well, what does that mean? Well, all those, the, the, if you're in a committed relationship, you love someone. If you're married, you love some even more. If you have children, you love even more. And what's the hormone of love? It's estrogen. So what it basically does, the more relational you are, the higher estrogen goes. So you have to have all these skills, men. If you're going to be married and have love, which is the greatest, greatest thing in the world, you have to be able to maintain your testosterone levels in the presence of your partner. And that's where all my relationship skills are skills to help men train men to help women come back to their female side. Cause most of them are all on their male side today. How it come back. We talked about one skill is learning how to talk to a man about your day, the feelings of the day in a way that he'll listen, how to talk to a man. So he'll listen instead of getting defensive. That's a whole art, art of communication. You just can't throw it out there. You can't just say what you think and what you feel. You have to consider how this is going to land on the other side. So the practice run for this is talk about things in your 10 minutes that have nothing to do with him. Then there's nothing to get defensive about. All he's going to want to do is interrupt with solutions and you end up with a smile on your face. Oh no, no, I'm just talking. Cause I, I feels good. I like to be close to you. I think about you all day and I just want, just want to connect with you again. Something sweet. You can easily train men. If you understand what men need to hear to do something. I mean, you can always say, I'll give you a thousand dollars. If you listen to me, he'll do it, but you don't need to do that. You just have to say, I just need you to listen to me for a few minutes and I'll feel better. I like to feel that way. I like to share myself. I can't share myself anywhere else. So fine. And final, I've got three, got a couple of minutes left. A study was done in Japan that said, they've had too much sex. Your testosterone level continues to go down, down, down. If you have sex, and what I mean by sex here is ejaculate. See, when I have sex every day, I don't ever ejaculate. I teach how men how to have orgasms without ejaculation. So you can be multi-orgasmic and so forth. There's a whole new art to learn. But the bottom line is if you want to, even as preparation for that, you have to give up the addiction to ejaculation. You start by once a week, you ejaculate. Now, if you ejaculate twice a week, the studies show your testosterone levels will just continue being at baseline and baseline goes lower and lower and lower. So they found if athletes in their twenties, if they had, if they ejaculated twice a week, their testosterone levels just stayed at baseline and went lower and lower. If you're a, if you have sex with a partner once a week on Saturday night, say, and go abstain from ejaculation for six days on the seventh day, they found with all the guys, when they woke up, their testosterone was 50% higher. The iron penis was back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, John. And that's a great, a great place to stop because I can't believe it. We're out of time. And I love what you say that that is a course that every man wants is to learn how to um, have sex without ejaculation. I think it's a fine art. Um, but everyone, you've got to check out John's array of books. I love the ones that I mentioned in the beginning, especially Beyond Mars and Venus. It's so appropriate for nowadays. And you can find all of his um, books and um, links to your, your blogs and your courses at MarsVenus.com, Mars and Venus on a date. Um, yeah, so there's an art to all of this. And I'm sure he gave you some nuggets that um, are just mind blowing. John, thank you so much. I oh, so good. Free courses at MarsVenus.com right there on the front page. Amazing. And we will definitely be having you back. Thanks again. And thanks everybody for joining us today. If I can help you with your health, you can contact me directly through the website, sarabantahealth.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products, my YouTube channel, and over a hundred channels under Accelerated Health Radio, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, or whatever podcast platform 
you subscribe to. If you like what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button and share with a few of your friends who may need my help. I know a lot of people are suffering in the bedroom and in their relationships and need to hear John's work. So share this episode as well, specifically. Join us every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. live. And you can find all of my supplements on the website and use coupon or welcome 10 for 10% off site wide. Thanks again and have a great week. Thanks, John. Thank you.